welcome to House Education on uh, November 11th, 2024. Um, we are returning to our discussion of our Commission on Public Education. I'm going to open up here at some point. Um, okay, so I, we don't have Ledge Council until a little later this morning. I was not here, but you all started the conversation on this and uh, did some high level discussion. I think now we will um, sort of power through it, maybe starting off with um, on this section one, which is uh, sort of the membership. That sound like a fine place to start for everybody? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure, before, um, sorry, nope. jump in. Beth had sent, she had done a little bit of work on some of the things we talked about yesterday as far as like the intent. Yeah. Um, and I think she had sent, she didn't, I don't think she sent the copy to everybody. If you go to other Beth St. James, yeah. level. is it the newest, like where we have different wording for? Well, that's not the one I'm looking for. So we, we have a document to look at? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll take a look through here. Okay, yeah. I, uh, I'm personally looking at 2.1 from yesterday. Yes. Yeah, I'll still go to yesterday's. I mean, I mean, where do we have it? I think most of the work was in the intent. So like we didn't, so, okay. Let me look through. Small. All right. So let's talk about commission makeup. Uh, I would say that if we, if we sort of look at our list starting on line nine, um, I would say the first two, I assume nobody really has a problem with. Chair. Yes. I, I feel that I don't quite uh, understand the chicken and the egg. And I just want to make sure that we don't really define um, strongly yet, or maybe that's the intention of the subgroups, mm -hmm. what they're going to dig into. And I kind of feel that it's hard for me to definitely say here's the makeup until I know they, what that they're making up. So this would be for the overall commission. The overall commission, yeah. yes. And I think in terms of work groups and subgroups, it would really be up to the commission to create them. Okay, so the subgroups the don't need, uh, we don't need to determine who is invited to the subgroups at all. I don't okay. think that that was the intention. I think the intention was to let the steering committee of the commission handle that work. And may I ask one just because it, to me, it, it comes down probably to uh, like scheduling. You know, once you know sort of who the people are and what their schedules are, that's yeah, where it is. Totally understand that. And then uh, I, I just have one more broad question yeah. before we dig in, which is that, um, so I went through my notes last night and there are many times that our, uh, that the specific need that we are hearing from everyone in testimony gets transitioned into a, a more like broad or generalized language that might encompass it, but I kind of want to make sure that it all gets represented. Uh, is that is that my understanding that we're trying to give as broad of language to the commission as possible? Um, I would say not as broad as possible. I, I think that we've tried to put some themes and, and whatnot together based on what we've heard. And then we might be able to bring some specificity today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I guess we are bring up a bigger question is should we go through the charge and then go back to, to make up the commission? That's what we were talking about yesterday. And in my brain, that makes the most sense to kind of hammer down the what it's that we're doing so we can better define who is doing the what. I okay. All right. So let's go down. Let's see. To, uh, we have page three. Line ten. Let me just talk a little broader here about what we're doing. 
for as all as soon as Aaron comes in, she's gonna run the show a little better. Uh, so we've got two hours this morning. We got time this afternoon. We got time tomorrow uh, to get this uh, in air. So we don't we aren't needing to uh, like decide it all by nine thirty. <laughs> okay. So uh, looks like uh, line ten, letter A is starting point one: governance, resources, and administration. The commission shall study and make recommendations regarding education governance at the state level, including whether the role of the agency of education shall be one of compliance monitor, one of service provider, or a combination of both roles. So that's to sort of say, what's the role of the AOE in the future of education? Um, recommendations under the subdivision shall include at a minimum the following, whether changes need to be made to the structure of the AOE including whether it better serves the education vision of the state as an agency or a department. And I think we have, we've heard from a lot of folks that um, one of the issues that should be looked at is whether it is a, um, a secretary political appointed position and run agency or uh, more of a commission the way commissioner and or the way it used to be. Okay. Can I just ask, yep. what's the, difference between a commissioner and a secretary? So um, in the old way, uh, before it changed in the Shumlin administration, we had a commissioner who was hired by the board of the state. So uh, not appointed by the governor. So it was considered less political, but was also not a member of the governor's cabinet. But were the roles and responsibilities the same? It, was it just a political? Um, probably the roles and responsibilities were the, were mainly the same. Uh, it was more who who did the selecting, and I think probably the um, they were had more of an oversight role of the operation of the agency. I can't say that. For sure. If it was the commissioner, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, in the title of commissioner, would that not give major power to the commissioner? One person. Uh, it it is. Um, I would say no. I think at a baseline, it's not much different than what it is today. What the power that the secretary has. It's more about who hires that person. In other words, today we have a secretary, oh, not a commissioner. commissioner? Uh, the state board would appoint the commissioner. The state board is made up of. Uh, well, so now now it's getting a little tricky. Because uh, I actually couldn't tell you if the makeup of the state board has changed. So we don't know if the state board is a political group. Correct. I mean, we, today, every member of the state board is appointed by the governor. Uh, what I don't know is if, I, and I think it was, or it, I don't know how it was appointed previous to it becoming a secretary position. But I know at one point, it wasn't like when Carol Lodi was chair of it back in the day. Yeah. It was, so who put the people on it? I don't know. Like we could ask her. She you know, there have been a proposal that I said, and this probably is based on historical president that like the secretary, the speaker appoints three, the pro tem appoints three, not, not, not legislators, the governor appoints three and you know, I don't know, maybe the other three were members of other groups. I, I guess mean, this, this, isn't, this isn't to say how it's going to happen. This is to say that this. Right. I guess I just decision. don't see how any, at any level, anyone that is picked for anything. <laughs> that isn't something. Yeah. I guess I would call it less directly political. Well, can I say that it, it, the, the politics is one thing, but the consistency of having a commissioner that doesn't have to change with the administration or isn't as likely to change with each administration would provide a more consistent vision and direction for the agency. That would be from like a, uh, I want a business standpoint, that makes more sense to me. So Peter. just to ask a question about that, does that mean that if or the way it is today and the governor didn't come back, that position would have to? Or is that a choice? It's a choice. The governor, a new governor can always appoint a new captain. Or, or, or not. 
or not. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. And, yeah. Wait, just, I just um, and I may be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the Secretary of Education is the only position the governor doesn't directly appoint. He has to get. Um, the, I believe the state board gives him options, and then he picks from those options. That's what. Whereas, like the Secretary of Transportation or whatever, he can directly has the jurisdiction over picking yeah, that. That I don't know. However, I just I do want to remind us that we're not debating. Right. This no, it just this is for the commission to look at. There, there was a three point one version. I just emailed Annie. I don't know if you got my email. Yeah. I just think she should be uploading. Great. Thank you very much. Good. Oh, I just uh, for the record, one thing that is BBC of education, I just got in touch with folks who have a little bit more historical knowledge of me and when your department the state board was still. Oh. And I'm sorry. But, but yeah, to your point, I think you're correct that um, uh, it wasn't, it, that didn't, the, the um, commissioner position did not change with the administration changing. All right. Uh, all right. So back to we're, we're going over the charges before we go over the makeup. Okay. Uh, line 19, page three, under this version. Uh, what roles, functions, or decisions should be a function of local control, and what roles, functions, or decisions should be a function of control at the state level? I think that we all understand that pension in that issue. And I also would remind everybody that, you know, when we talk about the makeup, we're talking about people who will also be very well versed in these issues as well. I mean, it's also interesting to me to be reading this charge in the context of an actual yield bill that is changing right now that seeks to address some of these questions. I, I guess I would be, and I'm putting this out there as a broad statement, more comfortable with a yield bill that doesn't reach out past the coming fiscal year, since we're trying to put this into it. Otherwise, those things are at odds. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have a comment if you don't know what the final yield bill shall look like. Yep. I don't want to be premature and even try to guess in any way, shape, or form. Uh, utilization of career and technical education in the larger public education system. And what are the staffing needs of the Agency of Education, both in terms of quantity and quality? Can we assume that they'll use that the report that we got on the CTEs, the study and recommendations to inform? Uh, I don't know if there's language in here, and if there isn't, there should be. Mm -hmm. sort of about, all the, about telling them to look at all the reports. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, physical size and footprint of the system, the commission shall study and make recommendations regarding how the geographical and socioeconomic needs of different communities should factor into the condition of education in the bond. Recommendations under this subdivision shall include, at a minimum, following, again, not limited to, an analysis of the current number and location of school districts and supervisory unions and whether additional consolidation of either system is needed to achieve Vermont's vision for education. Uh, we provide that if there is a recommendation for any amount of consolidation, the recommendation shall include a recommended implementation plan. So again, this isn't saying that it will recommend consolidation. Hi. Hey. We are. Hey. We're getting closer to one district, Larry. I'm <laughs> really going to be happy with the result. That's all I can tell you. Oh, good. So keep it going. All right. I can see you. I can see you. For our viewers, we just had uh, former Representative Larry Kugley stopping in and saying hello. Oh, um, okay. Uh, an analysis of the current public tuition program and whether, and if so, what changes are necessary to meet Vermont's vision for education. The role of public schools, letter C. The commission shall study and make recommendations regarding the role of public schools should play in both the provision of education and the social and emotional well-being of students. 
including recommendations at a minimum, how public education in Vermont should be delivered. That's a big one. Uh, whether Vermont's vision for public education shall include the provision of wraparound supports, or location of services. Again, not saying it should, but saying whether it should. And that other version is up now. Aaron and I had Andy put that other version up on right. our screen. Why don't, why don't we all take a moment to swap out version 2.1 for writing on my first version? Oh. I have a new version. <laughs> Thank you. you all need to sort of refresh, sure. Like I said, it was mostly the intent. It's not yet, but not a huge change. So is it safe to assume that they that that as we are reading along with this chart, that they that to get into the details of each section. That the commission itself will decide what needs to be addressed in a smaller group. Okay. Should they choose to form smaller group? Yes. Should they choose to form smaller group? Put that language in there. Uh, okay, we are now on uh, line 15. What consequences? In the new version? Yes. What the consequences are for the commission's recommendation regarding the role of public schools, including what the role of public schools mean for staffing, funding, and other affected systems. And you know, it's okay to say for each of these that folks want to boost in their head or out loud, what do you mean by that? And you know, I think that I, I'm confident that the folks that we are saying should be on this commission will understand what a lot of these mean. Uh, letter D, line 18, education fund, the commission shall study and make recommendations regarding what costs are currently borne by the education fund and what costs should be borne by the education fund and what changes are necessary to ensure sustainable and equitable use of the education fund. That's in what should be in there and what shouldn't be. Letter E, additional considerations. The commission may consider any other topic, factor, or issue. Uh, uh, little letter F, line four, prepare a work plan by September 15th, laying out sort of what it is they're going to do and how they're going to get there. Um, preliminary findings on or before January 15th, 2025. You know, could include by right by recommendation, I mean, could include items they think it would be actionable in that year of the legislature. And a report containing final recommendations for a statewide vision for Vermont's public education system and the policy changes necessary to make that educational vision a reality on or before December 1st, 2025. The goal being there that it would be available to the legislature. Starting right off in 2026. Anytime we um, put a bill together, I worry about dates. And I guess my question is have we had a discussion with um, Secretary of Education, for example, that this date is doable? The date well, I, so I would answer that by saying that when the commission prepares its interim report for the legislature in January 15th, 2025, they could make that recommendation that they need more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And really all these commissions yeah. and committees have come back to the legislature time and time again mm -hmm. and said, could we have to be on the bottom? Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Sorry about the um, word statewide, because I'm just wondering, is that what we're doing? We're looking for a statewide vision or a common vision? Statewide. So when people see that, it sound it feels like they're going to see that we're trying to take away local control. I mean, I, that's one of the challenges on the table. But I don't. I, think, I don't want to. And I get. I don't, I don't want to go in. I'm, I'm concerned about going into it with that statement as opposed to where it's an inquiry. Well, so um, they're making recommendations. I mean, we could take out the word statewide. It's redundant anyway. Well, or just common. I mean, it, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure if they, I don't know. You know, I mean, that's what the study committee is going to do. Is that 
the best, you know, is that when it's the most affordable and sustainable way to provide a quality education to all our children is implementing a state system. I'm I vision. Say my vision. Right. It's not a system. Yeah, I just, I, you know, I, reading that, it was like, oh, that's where they're headed. You know, they're headed towards a statewide system. But maybe that's me. Does anybody else read it that way? Or uh, So here's the way I see it. Okay. Uh, and I, some of the, the I'm, I'm going to use words that are not mine that I absolutely stole from testimony. But in order for us to make the hard decisions and the trade-offs that we need in the future, we all need to be traveling together toward a statewide vision. And that's why I think that that's really important. Because if we're all sort of operating in our own system with our own goals and outcomes that we're seeking, then we're going to continue to operate not together for statewide vision in our statewide funded system, but rather independently. And that doesn't mean that locally they can't have their own vision and, and mission statement oh, in the district, but, but there's got to be some kind of an umbrella. I think that, that might be even parts the of the statewide district. vision is individual. Right. Right. right, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. I just hope people don't read it. I understand it, but I do yeah. wonder if people yeah. read it and say it's yeah. yeah. consolidate and yeah. take away local control. Oh, that's, that's my concern. Yep. Fair. No. Okay. Okay. Um, assistance, and then uh, meeting. So let's. Those are so. Those are the charges as within this draft. So the question is: Shall we go up to makeup, or do people want to go over some of these charges in a little more detail? Oh, uh, I was just kind of wondering. Um, and this might get too prescriptive, but should there be a priority within these within these charges of, of really the focal point of what we're we're looking at for this task force? I know we need we need all these different aspects of it, but to have like the first one listed out as um, first one you read into is the, the governance model, which it's important. But is that really, is the governance model the real reason that we're in this situation that we're in right now? Personally, I should think so. But, you know, to me, my opinion, the most important part of this whole thing is to look at the education fund and what we're spending out of the education fund, my personal opinion. But I just didn't know if there was a way that we should prioritize things a little bit within the task force. Just kind of throwing it out there. It doesn't necessarily mean that we should, um, because then, you know, we're taking a little bit of too much control of the task force, but. Can you say more about the scale that you're talking about? Are you saying like, we're talking about affordability before we're talking about excellence? Or are you saying we're talking about, I don't know, um, larger class sizes before we're talking about consolidation? It, or... it, well, it's really hard because yeah. it all fits in, all this stuff fits yeah. in. But to me, the situation and the, you know, we're talking about a crisis that we're in right now, the crisis that we're in, is about the funding and about you know the you know, how much money we're spending and how much we're going to have to tax people to get the money to support the education system right now. So to me, that's the most important issue is figuring out what's in the education fund right now that maybe shouldn't be. Um, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, take over. Two thoughts. Okay. I don't want to take over your time. <laughs> Uh, I think in terms of the chart, like be, even though it's like in a certain order in here, yeah. in my mind, that doesn't mean right. it's just they yeah. have to be in some order. Sure. I, I would love it to be in like a grid. I, I, you know, we can't write legislation. And to me, like I had this on a horizontal piece of paper and there are three buckets. And so that's up to the commission and the work plan of sort of how they go about it. Right. But I do, to the point we're talking about yesterday, and even like, you know, what is there a, a bit more we can do now? Right. I do wonder if we perhaps are prescriptive a bit more about a deliverable for next January that has some preliminary recommendations. Yeah, like a, something right. only because 
the time scale here and when schools budget. So even if we're, if we're, if they're coming to a, right. us, you know, class size minimums, if they come, if class size minimums are, you know, a clear kind of policy towards some of the goals that we need to get to, if they come to that recommend, come to us next January, if we could even, you know, get it done, then you're still maybe another year out into implementation in the field. And so I do wonder. Almost a tiered type. Yeah, of if there's, yeah. and I, I think there's a little, I think there's a challenge for us in how prescriptive mm -hmm. we can be about, but but perhaps there's a some signaling, since we're using that word a lot, of like, are there some. We so, understand that some of these can maybe get. Right, and, and potentially before. there would be, you know, right. policies that could start on the track even before all of this work, work is right. done. Because this all does need to get done. It's yes. Just, and so, yeah, so I'm trying to, things and, 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 and clearly like bending the cost curve in the, as all of this moves along is part of that. And so maybe it, maybe it's under. We could add some, <laughs> some intent language or, you know, this says, um, you know, the committee is encouraged. I don't know. It is the intent of the General Assembly that the commission will, um, um provide cost containing strategies as soon as you know january I, to, to the timing point you're absolutely right everything yeah it's that out. sort of school year budgeting cycle yeah. and, and not wanting to and, and we want to do this better and more, more coherently in the field you know class size mental you, that means you need to be staffing planning contracting like there's a lot of stuff that has to happen yeah. on a yeah. calendar that we cannot control to that yeah. nope. nelson yeah, i think i had a yeah, well i see two things that we're trying to do one is improve the educational system because our educators are looking for something to help them out on the other side you have the taxpayers that are looking for something to help them out funding wise and i don't think that uh, it's so much the funding that's the issue out there is the way the funding is paid. I really truly believe, and we should look at that somehow to understand it, because if people want their children educated, same as the educated, the staff that's doing the education. But if we don't look at the funding problem, clearly understand why it is where it is, we're missing the whole thing. The, 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 yeah, we continue to lose bu budgets and we continue to have problems as long as the funding problems is the way it is today. We need to find a different way. And this should be part of their charge is looking at how the education system is funded and then decide on how or make suggestions on how it might be funded in a more equal way across the population of Vermont, whether it be businesses or corporations or individuals. And if we don't look at that, I think we're missing the bucket here. The main, one of the main reasons. I, I just, I think that I agree. And I think that what I'm hearing from a lot of people who've been here longer, that we have, particularly on that piece, a lot of study and analysis. We have, we had a big income tax. There are a lot of different, there's a lot of work sitting on shelves around how, the, what exactly what the finance mechanisms are. And again, I think the current draft of the yield bill that's likely changing signals a pretty, another change. And so I- Knowing how they are is different than finding some way to implement change. And right. that's really what we're looking for is someone to come back and say to us, you need to implement change and here's some of the ways you might wanna do that. And if the commission should look at that, then that, that's funding. On the educational side, with leadership and so forth, I, I agree with some of that. Yeah. I, I don't know how many heads of the Agency of Education we've had in the last several years, but it's been a lot. There's been changes there. Yeah. It, there's no stability, and that in itself creates problems. And so when the commissioner looks at that, or this commission, yeah. then we should... Uh, sort of see why that is as well, because it might be a combination of the Board of Education, the governor, and this legislature that's making it such a hard position. Right, which I think is part of, that's like, that's why the, you know, charge A is governance, resources, and administration. 
I guess I worry a little bit if this gets very prescriptive about the finance system specifically, what we are hopefully setting this group up to do is the what we've been hearing of like, what is the system, the policy, the thing that we are moving towards and need and can afford in the reality of the size of Vermont today? And then how do you finance it? And in many ways, then how do you finance it is the easier system and change. And it's what we have far more research on. We can make some different policy decisions about how to do it. I mean, they debate that in ways and means on Senate finance. And then um, I, but I to, to to, on the finance loop, and then I saw other hands. I think I wonder to what you're saying, uh, Chris. If D, the education fund part, if there's like a deliverable, uh, uh, you know, with initial recommendations by next January, because and it also speaks somewhat to what you're saying, Nelson, in terms of just overall how much we're spending on education. This isn't who's paying it, but how much we're spending is a huge part of it. And so, if if we can start to get real clear about what does and doesn't belong in the ed fund. Obviously, we're going to have other disagreements potentially about who's paying sales tax, property tax things, but that's starting to clarify. And but yet keeping it within the sort of the system first, and then the finance system follows. So yeah. I just to sort of keep us focused on yeah. the document in front of us, we're we're discussing letter D, uh, and I, it sounds like perhaps. Um, we should add a bit more to that, I think, to encourage somehow deliverables by the start or by, with our, uh, by the report date um, for, I don't know what term to use, cost-containing yeah. strategy that could be implemented or could be considered by the General Assembly in 2025. Okay. Right, and even in transparency, maybe, because it's, it's kind of, you know, what's in the end fund is part of the transparency. Can I, yeah. no, right. we're, we're, no, we're, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't so. so we, because Beth's not here, we got to make sure this is all, like, if we are deciding on some things, we got to yeah. make sure it's how yeah. we got to get this to Beth. Yeah, we're, 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 she'll be here. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. we don't have that much, so we're interpreting yeah. today. So, so let's as let this. We start to solidify some ideas that we want to go to Beth. Yeah. We're going to need to pause for a couple minutes to make sure that it's yeah. 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 Of course, building yes. okay. she's so good at the language for us. Sorry, well. Sorry I didn't yeah. want to stop because I know Serena had her, her hand up for a while. Yeah. Yeah. you're up. Um, I would really argue against talking about funding because I think it will contain people's ideas. I mean, there, there probably could be ideas out there that we haven't thought of that. You know, that could, um, you know, share this vision. We're saying sustainable, you know, and sustainable means we have to be able to pay for it. So I feel like under the umbrella of this whole conversation is a system that is sustainable uh, by funding. I mean, maybe that's so, a mess. So you I'm are sure. arguing for or not, really? not trying. I mean, maybe we have to like, I don't know how we have to think about funding, but I think if we kind of think about, oh, this idea, and that's going to cost that and we can't do that, that's going to get in the way of maybe triggering another idea that would be more cost containment and maybe could be done and reach our goal or the vision. Um, but I, 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 I hesitate about looking at funding as we're trying to do our vision <clears throat> as well. Because we are saying sustainable. It's not like we're saying, you know, the pie, you know, the like skies are pie. Carefully pie. chosen word. Yeah. yeah. Fish out of the rush. Well, I just wanted to uh, remind us that in, in the yield bill, we do have the creation of the Education Fund Advisory Committee. That's exactly That's what, what I was Let's we'll not count on anything. Yep. Yep. I, I hear you. So how can we put a pin in something? Because if it's a chicken and the egg issue, if this is created, this advisory committee, then our commission should be collaborating with that committee on this particular factor. And so then do we leave our language very general so that it allows for the opportunity to collaborate with such an advisory committee, or do we need to put in language to ensure that there is such an advisory committee? Uh, I would say we should not get into the debate over whether there should be an education fund advisory committee. Um, but I think to your point about leaving things general, 
so that if there is such a, if you look at the chart in that committee, it's a little more about building expertise and knowledge about the ed fund and how it works mm -hmm. and things like waste and all that. It doesn't, I don't think it's do like with, it. with doing cost containment strategies or vision or whatnot. So then, then in this particular section of our bill, should we get more specific about cost containment strategies? Because we don't actually use that verbiage. Well, I, you guys can think very well, but I think what we are putting on the table here to talk about is should in letter D, we add something that says something about deliverables in 2025 for strategies, we can use whatever term we want to use, with the idea being that you know it takes a solid year to actually implement them. Right, Catherine. So I was going to bring that up because I did read, and it does talk about weights, but it talks about other things too. And I'm wondering when we we're operating in silos. I think that's a lot of the reason of why we're in the situation we're in right now. So in the deliverable section, if we go with this ed fund deep dive sub whatever the heck you want to call it, maybe we put a deliverable that they have some kind of communication with the money committee so that that is clearly like they're expecting it. What do you say to the money committee? What, what it means you? with the people who actually do the work once we tell, I mean, you know, policy goes before funding, but just make sure that that does happen. I don't know if there's some word that we can put in the deliverable if we go this path to make sure that they're using, that they're getting this information and hopefully using it to make informed decisions about how education is truly funded. I'm just- yeah, Aaron, then Nelson. I think Nelson let's, I'm gonna try to keep us to the actual language of what's in here in D mm -hmm. now so that we can work from that. And it, what is in here is about where different costs are paid out of. It's not getting at exactly how much they cost or whether we're doing them or not, but it's where are costs paid out of. One of the things this year, I think again, that we've heard a lot is, there isn't that much local control because actually there's a lot of things that are mandated on us that have to be in our budgets. So therefore are in the ed fund, PCBs, universal meals, mental health, like, you know, <laughs> increase SEL needs. So I, I, if, if we want to clearly link, that's obviously a cost issue, but stay within sort of the policy realm. I think this is tighter as it is right now in a way, and we could, make it even more specific about some recommendations or, you know, feedback to the General Assembly. And I think this is, it's, this is the Appropriations Committee as much as it's ways and means, because this is general fund as well. But I, I think that's what that is, what, what is there right now. And I personally would advocate for keeping it to that sort of specificity. Respectfully, yeah. I think that um, it is sort of saying that, but it doesn't actually, so what it says to me is um, you, this cost could be born out of the ed fund or not out of the ed fund, but it doesn't specifically address, I mean, it says necessary to ensure sustainable and equitable use of the education fund. Okay, so then we just move that cost over to the general fund. I think we need to be specific about every strategy having a cost containing um, containment factor, regardless of what fund it actually ends up in down the road. You're just advocating for language about cost to be containment. more clear. I think we need to make sure that there's language about cost containment and not just use of the ed fund. Those say two different things to me. So, do we have some language we'd like to put on the table? Some suggested language? Um, well, what changes are necessary to ensure sustainable and equitable use of the education fund? and other cost-containing strategies that might end up in other funds or cost-containing strategies that affect the overall delivery of the system. Nelson? Yeah, I don't know if it goes right in this section, but part of what I've heard is that there could be another committee study as well doing some of this. Somehow we have to make sure that they collaborate. Somehow they, we're saying in the beginning that the commission needs to take them, have special people come in. So we also should make them aware of the fact that there's other studies or possible other studies going on, that they look at that as well. Yeah, we're going to put in a section for sure that says 
shall make use of all relevant studies. Yeah, because one will be working in the dark and the other one will be working in the sunlight, but the bottom line is they'll be so far apart, they won't know what's going on. Right. And we don't have, I mean, we don't know for sure of any other committees. And, and group at this point. I'm just going to argue, you know, just one more time about putting something in about cost containment, because that means someone has to figure out what the cost is of something. And what I'm hoping for this group, uh, not us, the, the, um, whatever, the blue ribbon, that they can come up with, they can come up with ideas, not, not unreasonable ideas, but just, I can, we have to ha get new thinking in. You know, we have to have a new vision because this isn't working. Yeah, and I think heard, it, you haven't heard me say contain okay. a cost. What I what I've said okay. is to find a way to make it so it's cost effective for everybody. So it's equal across everybody out there that has to pay taxes yep. instead of it being all on the back of one group. Right. And I think we get, we need to continue what you're saying. Worry about education and how we deliver it. Make sure it's the best we can provide. But then we need to really look at the cost, and not in a containment way, but in a more equal way across the population of Vermont. Yeah. I, okay. I just want like the big picture, and then keep bringing it down. It's like that's too expensive. Bring it down. That, but I don't want you have language. You, you, well, this language, I like this language. Okay. You know, I just don't. I'm concerned about tying funding to it because I think then you have to get how much is this going to cost and how much is this going to cost and people aren't going to be able to just think of new ideas. We, we've been doing that all along. We've always said let's move this to the education fund and then you don't worry about the cost. I mean, not worry, whatever I mean, about the cost. And we have to start thinking different than the fact that this just fits in the education fund. Chris, yeah. just wondering if at, at the very end of D when it says um, and what changes are necessary to ensure sustainable and equitable use of maybe instead of the education fund, we'd say state funds, right? Instead of just the education fund, and yeah. that would that would encompass anything that might be moved over to the general fund. Because we're already talking about the education fund earlier in that section, yes. And what costs should be borne by the education fund, and what changes are necessary mm -hmm. to ensure sustainable and equitable use of state funds. I like that. I like that. I don't know. Sausage getting made. You're a sailor. I'm kind of going to take notes here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the last two words changing to state funds rather than education fund because we already referenced the education yeah. fund above it. I have also in all of this discussion, I think let's remember the context. I yeah. don't think there's going to be anybody on this commission that isn't well versed in the cost challenge and the reality these these are not like astronauts strapped in and you know right. for the for, this is they know why they're there this is well <laughs> there's it's very clear where we are why that it you know i mean and what like the second charge the footprint of the system the role of school like <clears throat> even if the word cost isn't every other word to me it's like in red letters across every page. Yes. That's happening. That's yes, respect. I just keep yes. hearing in the building like move it out of the ed fund, move it out of the ed fund, and then yeah, it and it doesn't change the cost. That it just distributes it differently. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And you know, and it's a it's a pretty challenging um, thing to do when we have been told over and over again that the general fund has no wiggle room. All right. That's so are we just talking about D or can we do other stuff too? Uh, well, if, if people are feel resolved on D. we got to be resolved on D. For yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel resolved on D. All right. I feel and we can, we can, we've got time to, to revisit if people that we need to. I just, we, were, we would, our next step was to move back up to the composition, but if you have something within the charge section that you might yes. bring up. Um, I feel most of C is irrelevant apart from subsection D. So page five, yeah, seven. seven to seventeen. Um, I do think we need to talk about the provision of wraparound and supports and co-location of services, but the rest of it just feels kind of like a fuzzy word salad to me. And I, I guess this would be the place too. I wonder if we actually mention uh, community schools model. And I, I say that actually because I was reading through the Kerwin Commission and the Maryland model, and there's specific recommendations like mandates that in their system that they go towards community schools. Like I, it's, it, this isn't a, like an isolated thing. Vermont is 
right. doing. There's a, and how, what we mean by the term, but um, certainly matters, but maybe the, the wording here has the same effect. I mean, maybe the whole section could be about community school. I was gonna say, yeah, kind yeah, of what I, I mean. Little it, I two, or little, little two I's. Um, could you put K on line 13? Yeah, to me, that could just say, the only meat in there. Can, can look and say, look at the um, community schools model. Mm -hmm. I'll be more specific. <clears throat> Um, well, and it also says, you know, the role of public schools in addressing this, but it doesn't um, make any mention of how we might be working across different um, agencies in our state to deliver it. That's what I would like to add in. Yeah, and actually, we were, Aaron and I had a full conversation the other day about when we go to the composition part of it, that's what we're talking about, or, or directing them to take testimony from. The mental health providers. Yeah, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. Just because I'm thinking about this as a goal setting, short term, mid term, long term goals, community schools aren't yet encompassing like more than just what five schools. So I think wraparound services, looking at how other schools in the, in the meantime, those who yep. don't have community schools need, how are they utilizing wraparound services? Do they have, you know, for mental health and all these other big cost drivers? I think it is important not to completely axe wraparound services. You could put wraparound services. And community schools, wraparound services, including community schools, but since they don't encompass the whole state, I want us to just pigeonhole on that. Yep, I think it's reasonable. Chris? Yeah, just a concern I have, and I, I should have mentioned this right at the get go, that um, I just I want to make sure that this doesn't become a committee that is the means to a predetermined end. So I want to leave a lot lately. I know we all come in here with initiatives that we want and push for. I just want to make sure that it's not reflected in this that gets reflected onto a task force. Well, I agree. So that would be a so don't like, not mention community schools. And uh, hopefully they, yeah. I mean, yeah. like I know that I love community schools. It's not strictly that, that just triggered yeah. me to think about yeah. that. I was thinking yeah. about that. As Aaron will mm -hmm. point out, now we'll repeat these aren't ash costs being dropped in public. <laughs> I just want to concur with that. And because I'm hearing about instead of community schools, resource centers. You know, and I think about schools closing and then those buildings being repurposed for the same function as community schools. But again, I, I don't want to go in with saying that this is the answer because it, again, it may be another model, maybe not, I don't know, but that does the same thing, but. So I, I do want us to be somewhat cognizant of the fact that um, commissions sometimes complain that they aren't getting enough instruction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Interesting. So it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bearing back, see the role of public schools. No changes. So, well, I, I really feel that we should tip some hat to the to uh, cross-agency delivery. Um, or there's some publication on 14, does that um, uh, how about how okay, the of uh, um, whether the Vermont Center should include the provision of wraparound supports for services? Oh, I see where you're getting that with the yeah, Where do we just like that? I, I agree with you um, that we need to say um, the role and the role of designated agencies and provide or, or other service providers in the delivery of those services. Can I just ask for this? So is it so kids can access learning that all the, I mean, it's, if a kid is how learning. That, what you're asking, how does that apply to the language? Because I wonder about why we provide these resources. It's you know, why to line nine for the provision of education. Right, but I see the provision of it, you know, the role of education is to advance learning, academics, you know, others. Right, and we are asking well. this commission to, to, Read through that issue exactly that issue right but is if a kid was learning doing well i need mean, to get okay. here to a debate that the commission is going to have no i'm just asking like if a kid's doing well do we still provide services for them 
You know what I mean? It's is that is I don't, I don't know the answer. Anymore. I know. Nobody I don't. Does. I don't either. You know, is the school of all kind of just, so how that concern you have? Well, how, we, how do you want to translate that? Again, it goes here? back to what Chris was saying. I don't want to predetermine. Um, like community schools or any other thing because... Okay, are, are you concerned that we're predetermining something here if we add in um, the role of other service providers? In the service of helping students advance learning. That's what I'm, one, I'm wondering. I don't know. I think, I wonder if the role of school has changed. Is we announced right, okay, yeah, it's not like you would debate that the commission is really going to wrestle with yeah, it. Makes sense. Okay. We're trying to direct you know, them. We're really not to direct them to have that conversation. Okay. Okay. So to the specific language change that we're looking for, though, um, we want something more specific, essentially about agency uh, uh, collaboration. Whether the Vermont's whether the, the role of public education, yeah, I, I you know, it's it's really sort of well, asking about the role of other service providers and slipping that in there somewhere, and probably in little maybe two 13. whether or how nine fourteen right whether and how or what what is the role of public education and providing resources. Or, or yeah, maybe it's in three, the consequences for regarding the role of public schools and other state agencies or other, other service providers. And other service providers. Other student service providers. That's where we're yeah, going. yeah. Public students and other service providers. Yeah. 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 And three. That's what I thought. So on line 16. Yes. Mm -hmm. The public schools. It's there. All right. Charges. Are we so C and D? We, you know, I think after we sort of go through, yeah. we'll, we'll revisit if we have time to sort of say, okay, let's go back and just. But I can send, but Chris and I will send to Jeff kind of the information of where we're landing right now on C and D. Yeah. So in that regard, let's just keep going reverse alphabetical yeah. to B. Yeah. And sort of down and then back up. Yeah. I think this is not quite right as it is and super important. Um, my initial thoughts are we could, this might be a place, Chris, of some specific nod to research on class size minimums, maybe, or maybe that just falls into another research they have. Right. But I also think we need a very, a more explicit tie to the school construction program, the future of the school construction program in connection to this section. And I might need best help figuring out how best to do that. That's going to be hard if we, we don't really have a school construction program yet. Oh, I don't know. But I, there should be word again there. And these, but these are sort of working at parallel times. Mm -hmm. And so shouldn't, and maybe it's collaboration with, I mean, it, it, quite frankly, there could be some kind of interplay here about oh, it's right. in that program well then we're going to recommend this like i think there's a pretty great opportunity so maybe it's just explicit i, I think it needs to be explicit about collaboration explicit collaboration yeah task force or task force because you know we talk about uh you know cost saving measures and the incentives that the task force is going to come up with uh, you know, and cost containment. I think about um, when they did it, they closed Duxbury and Waterbury and sort of created a new elementary school that was done with some significant um, state incentive to make that happen. And it resulted in significant cost savings. So, yeah. So maybe it's as simple as that, but I disagree, but I'm just saying, I think, I don't know the germaneness between 
construction and what this task force is doing. I, I, I see it afterwards, like once the vision, like I remember again, like- Well, I think that you could see, you could, you could link them by saying that, you know, this group may say that the vision for Vermont yeah. uh, means uh, should be uh, newer and fewer. They might agree with that and say that that should be a top priority to the vision for Vermont. And that needs to be communicated to the school construction task force. But can it just be communicated to at least someone from in instruction in this committee? Uh, well, I, I, you're, just, you're running people thin. You then you get down to like who. Well, is that what you were suggesting? Put someone on the committee? No, I'm saying collaboration, that there's a oh, direct okay. link between these two. Okay, sorry. Yep. I thought you were putting someone from instruction on the committee. I'm sorry. So I mean, in my dream, dream world, Jill Briggs Campbell would be on both. I don't see anything in here that talks about um, a look at um, Vermont's workforce and our ability to staff the current schools and where how that might shift. And I feel like this might be a really good section for that to land in. I had a Department of Labor person on here. Somewhere well, I that. think more you're talking about is our ability to staff it. You're staff talking about the, the education workforce. Yes, yeah. uh, right, which directly yeah. is into the current number and location of schools. And whether or not... Um, I mean, that's on page five, line 17, isn't it? The public schools needs for staffing funding and any other effective system. That that's was, under... Right, it's under different, yeah. Right. right. I, I do think, think there's go, something. Yeah, no, 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 go. no. Well, I, 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 I do think. Again, there's like this chicken and egg. Like too many people, too many buildings. Too like we're, and so some tie there is not a. Again, they're not astronauts coming from Neptune right. for this, so they are. But there is maybe an explicit. So, so yeah, make a recommendation regarding how the unique geographical and social economic opportunities should factor into the provision of education for Vermont. We can add it to that list. Um, we can say how the right, how the um, staffing needs, unique geographical and social economic needs of different communities should factor into the provision of education in Vermont. I, mean, I, I think that. Or you could. I wonder if there's like a, a little number two survey. About before we get into public tuition, I, I, I'm sorry, um, of mm -hmm. speaking to basically like a sustainable, well trained and supported education workforce, basically trying to get at right sizing. But yes, because the, is the intersection of, but then I don't want to yeah. that at all. Yeah. Go ahead, Tisha. Yes, because I mean, one thing I, I went back and looked at uh, some testimony and it talked about workforce pipeline, uh, pipeline uh, provisional licenses, um, pay discussion, including cost of living, contract start dates for superintendents versus teachers, um, early retirement uh, buyout offerings. Um, and so how do you distill those kinds of things down to a, uh, one sentence for them to? And, and, and we're talking about um, physical footprint here. And some of that falls outside yeah. of that. Yeah. Some of that does, right. So it'd be in the other section that Brian's talking about. But in this regard, I see, yeah, I was thinking about that. And... Or perhaps it isn't. Perhaps it isn't necessary if I, if little I is a bit more specific because I wonder if it's really the, the number and location of districts or well it's also building, right? It's right. I mean location. one of the more salient points has been that Act 46 was really about consolidation of governance and was somewhat successful in that, not perfect. And but it didn't necessarily, and I'm not steeped deeply in the history of Act 46, get to like building consolidation. And so we keep hearing it's it's specific. Current number and location of school districts, supervisory unions, and buildings. Buildings and the amount of uh, and staffing requirement. Well, 
So I'm gonna say if we look at line 18 on the way on down, uh, so an analysis of the current number and location of school districts and supervisory unions, and I believe certainly thrown buildings, okay. and whether uh, additional consolidation of either system is needed to achieve Vermont's vision for education. That, you know, is Vermont's vision of education to have a highly qualified teacher in front of all children. Right. You know, will, so do we need to direct the commission to to drill into that issue? Right. And I'm not saying you do or you don't. I, I yeah. don't really know the answer to that. Should we be more prescriptive about talking about the ability to put a high quality teacher in front of the child? I mean, I don't think it hurts to state that. If we think that they're obviously going to do it, then what's the harm in stating it? Oh, well, we, I don't think we can say that. The, I'm saying what my vision is when I say a high quality yeah. child, <laughs> child. Right. but we do need to talk about what? ability to staff buildings with qualified oh, teachers. Qualified workforce, yes. Workforce. Yep. So how do we how do we plug that concept in here? Or say what you said. <laughs> All right. So if we. Um, uh, so oh, what was the language in 173? Wasn't it high quality teacher? It was qualified. I don't know. It was high quality teacher. Well, and that's what we're working towards on original licenses. You know, when we, there's the goal and then there's the pipeline. Well, and that's a thing to talk about. Yeah, we don't have enough. And an analysis, how about um, under include a recommended in Lajiva? And I think you actually said this before, right? Before the public tuition analysis, do we say um, um, uh, staffing, uh, uh, will we qualified labor? I think it's on a I can go with what Aaron says. Throw in another, oh, throw in its own little I, I, whatever. Right above that one. Because it's getting way too clunky to put it. Like, yeah. Buildings. Right. So maybe above the two little I's, what it will. Yes. We'll add in a one. An analysis. One, a little I, A. Or like a, yeah. Well, yeah. An analysis of the words you just said. An analysis of, uh, or analysis of, uh, School systems, or I don't know what I'm going to say, public education system, or whatever, yeah. a, a, um, ability to hire and retain highly qualified staff. You can be skeptic that I want to hear what say. Didn't they already have that? Um, that's something we need to spell out, I guess. Well, that's, 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 that's what we're debating is, you know, so if, if we have schools that are out there that, um, you know, are only functioning, you know, we had, we had a superintendent from uh, Orleans Central come in and say, I'm, I'm, I got 50% teachers on traditional licenses, and I am my, you know, and we aren't right. consolidating where we can have that. So why? Why are they only functioning that way? Well, that's fine. I, you know, I, I don't want us to, to say something that we can't adhere to. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll the we'll I mean, interestingly, though, to your point, like what, what I heard from that why there is that, you know, there were three or four elementaries that are still operating K-8 that have more room than they have kids. And in our current structure, though, you know, those communities have wanted to keep each individual K-8 for many good community reasons open, even as classes get smaller and smaller and classes have to be combined. And, you know, there, there's a big trade-off there. And so right. they're stretched just trying to staff them. At, but but on the other side, that they're, they're keeping four right. three or four K to eights open. I see that. I just, I just worry about us putting ourselves into yeah. a box that we can't yeah. get out of. Yeah. Where I also see that we're headed towards is um, with the amount of staff that we need right now, we can't reach that quality consistently. Right. And so lowering that number of staff will increase our ability to get less staff at higher quality. I think what are we talking about? We're talking about, you know, 
we got too many classrooms that are operating. Yeah, yeah. I'm there. I just want us to keep remembering why it is the way it is. Yeah. And and we're getting some great ideas yep. as to how to fix those whys, but yep. there's lots of whys. Yes, yeah, mainly your constituents, I think, that will need to understand that. Oh, don't uh, I don't, my constituents don't have schools, so oh. they are in the hands <laughs> of other schools. <laughs> They rely on other people's decisions. Do you feel like you have guidance there to put in an extra I that speaks to um, yeah. the ability to um, staff all schools with qualified or something, something along those lines? Yes, mm -hmm. I'm going to now throw another. If we're going to put that in there, do we say something about um, you know, research or best practice in class size minimums. Well, that's a good I wouldn't put that in yet. I wouldn't put that in yet. I, I would think that would be something again that they have, because again, maybe there's another way that we're not thinking of. I mean, I think that it has to be the kids are taught by an excellent teacher. We know that by data, that that is the most important thing in advancing learning is the quality of the teacher. What I was wondering last time when I was looking at this, is it would it be possible if they have an intent section that explains why we're having a commission and in the intent? Well, so is it is that specific to this yes. charge? To yes. do, oh, sorry, just to B. We're on B right now. Yeah. Physical size and footprint. Sorry, but an intent I, just is, is for that section? Or an intent? Yeah. Oh, sorry, to answer your concern. Then let's section. wait till we get back and to in the, the intent. The intent, you know, we could say that statement that all kids deserve sure. a high quality ed teacher because that is what advanced learning. Just to frame that conversation, it's, we know that maybe clunky, but we're workshopping this great analysis of the capacity and ability to staff all public schools with a qualified workforce that's related to database class size recommendations. It's related to data or something, things. Uh, kind of. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, almost there. It's getting there. Yeah, getting getting there. closer. Um, getting closer. Yeah. The last words are a little exactly. Yeah, I think we could good. go back to Megan Roy's testimony and Anne Borden. You know, AOE came in too in terms of the exact how we reference that researcher data. Yeah, the whatever the those words, words are, but yeah. Yeah. analysis of the capacity and ability to staff all public schools with a qualified workforce. That's related to, and that's where you come up with these words, word salad, yep. data-based, class size recommendation, research, whatever. But the first part makes sense. Yep. And like that, I just want to make sure that we don't get lost in having deliverable of that for sure for next or attempt to have a deliverable for the class size or, or something. You're saying you that you want that deliverable spelled out or you don't want that deliverable spelled out? I, I would rather I would like. Make sure because we've been talking a little bit about making sure we having something ready for next year that we can that can be kind of implemented so that the year after I want to make sure that it doesn't get buried in just the, the language here. I want to make sure it's it's flagged a little bit better somewhere. Well, I think it helps one train access it's not specifically anywhere. So oh, so, oh no, I, 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 then then forward, but I just want to make sure I just want to throw that I don't want it to get buried. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I think there's also, I, I totally agree. And then there's the chicken and egg question of like the buildings, the people, which to be like, you know, some, if you have a few, one less building, you're probably going to have a few less people with it. The order of operations here is so messy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I sent the language of the press in there and already. Right. I don't like the word qualified because I think you can have qualified you know, paraeducators, and you can have qualified all the staff. Highly qualified teachers are very well known. That's in a lot of our statute. Well, what do you what would you substitute? Well, just I just want to separate high what quality. Would you substitute? If you want the one seventy three language, so you're done. Highly skilled. Highly skilled master teacher. There. But we're talking about all staff. Yeah. But all staff includes teachers, so yeah. they fit into just qualified. I mean, I've worked with qualified teachers, and then I've worked with high master level teachers, and 
There's a big difference. Which is talking about mean. staff, so you like for an occupational therapist, like maybe mm -hmm. what's in a school qualified would like encompass that too. For we we don't get to the great licensing statutes here. <laughs> we're we're existing within a system that already exists. We're not starting from scratch. Okay. There's a licensing you know system mm -hmm. for how teachers are qualified or highly qualified. I would. I mean, she just said qualified. Qualified. Yeah. Licensed. I mean, quite frankly, that's the like. Yes, totally what we're trying to, I think, and I, you know, I, I think that we could be general because we're talking about all staff. You, you don't need to be a licensed paraprofessional. Correct. If you're talking about a teacher, right? Yeah, correct. I'm just, I'll just, I won't talk anymore on this, but I'm just going to say data is so clear that what is best a child is to be in front of a highly qualified teacher. That is, I mean, that's where I want my tax money going, honestly. Um, because I know that's what will help, you know, poor kids, you know, historically marginalized kids is to get in front of that teacher. And that's yeah, just- We're not, we're not dictating a vision to this commission. I know. I just felt I, but I'm assuming they're all very well it. aware because that is okay. like the most obvious yeah. piece of data that's out there. Okay. Sorry. So it's Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, can we continue through B? So right now we have in in big B physical size and footprint, we're gonna create an explicit collaborative tie to the school construction task force work. In little I, we're adding districts, unions, and buildings. And then we're creating a new II that Chris and Mary Catherine and I are somehow we're mm -hmm. settling into the sort of workforce issue and a class size and class size research. And so now tuitioning is going to become little I, I, I. And let's take on that section. I didn't see anything about looking at rulemaking or separate subcommittees. Um, I mean, I recognize that's the state board's job. Where is what would you suggest there? Um, an analysis of, of the current public tuition program and rules governing independent schools approved for receiving public tuition. And if so, what changes are necessary to leave the Moss Vision for Education? Did that, did that get to it? Um, that would get to it. Um, but I also think it is important to look at our therapeutic programs the number of them and I it, it's if we're gonna yeah. look at it like yeah. I know but where if not this to look at it we we talk about an analysis are we talking about an analysis of sort of the the legal system that all lives in or are we talking about sort of like money dollars in the scope of schools that are part of that and i think program. that's what we need to be more specific yeah, about. yeah. Personally, that's analysis. what i think we need to yeah like right. how so, much what could, where yeah. Yeah. who what towns that kind of thing i mean i think you know we've all heard that get presentations about like the legal landscape yeah and I also wonder, do we bring in, um, this is where my freshmanness is right here, operating, non-operating, partially operating. Like, that's a, that is funding. Uh, I would that's just funding? Yeah, that's just funding? Really I mean, I think that, um, that those are, it's a funding issue. It's a big, fund, it's a big funding issue. I'm not saying it's only a funding issue. Uh, I wonder if we, need to spell out specifically in here again these are not astronauts joining the commission so they're going to be well aware of all of this but 
the historic academies specifically, town tuition program. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't no. think so. I okay. think, you know, that's part of the vision to me. And I forgot what I had said earlier. And so oh. should it be an analysis of the town tuition program, not public tuition? Well, program? I, mean, I, had a, it, yeah, I didn't even know public tuition program was a term. I don't know what that is. is. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's called yeah. the town tuition program. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, um, that's one of that. Okay. Uh, however, town tuition so program really big... does not speak to therapeutic schools. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that may be a that may be another I. Or is it, does it fall under the other considerations and additional considerations, E, and you've got, if we take somebody from the Act 173 working group, they're well steeped in what's happening in the world, special education and the rampant of the end. I mean, I, we haven't gotten there yet, but yeah. the fact that we don't even have the words special education in this document also has me concerned. I, I recognize that you're right. Okay, there's two things. Yeah. If we keep saying that these people are well versed, then what's the point of us even doing this at all? So we have to balance those two things, and I think we should say it. If we, and if we don't have to say how they're going to do it, but that they should address it um, because we just because I will sleep better at night if it's just in this document that they're supposed to do it, even though it might be inherently obvious. Therapeutic schools. Therapeutic schools. Like 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 right. I'm, I would be nervous about putting special, I mean, special education is fundamental to education in every school. And when we're talking about like the footprint, I, I, I don't know. And it's, it's directly into uh, our affordability issue. Like we, we've all heard that special ed is through the roof when it's very- Is that a, this is like the physical size of the system. Is that really a physical size of the system issue or is that a delivery? Like, is that under role of schools and- uh, right. Well, to, me, uh, to be honest with you, like I have a list here on the left and I haven't integrated all of it. And so I thought we'll just go yeah. through and naturally find it and then then get to the point where we're like, it, we no, haven't said it. Yeah. Um, yes, no, I, respectfully, yes. Yeah. And I, I had a tangent with talking about therapeutic schools and that therapy. Yeah, but I would like. Please don't lose that. I will not lose that. Thank you, because I, I, mean, I think it does get here so far. Okay. Mm -hmm. So therapeutic school. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Is it including the like, legal, uh, legal and fiscal consequences of public funds? Are you talking about where are you? So if we're still now in our new little III, talking about the public mm -hmm. tuition program, and whether and if so, what changes are necessary to meet Vermont's vision for education, including the legal and fiscal, and fiscal or legal and financial consequences or impact, financial impact? Of yes, I like. Not, I don't know if I like consequences impact. Yeah, uh, I, I would say impact. I would pick up consequences. impact of. Legal and oh, funds going to independent schools and other private institutions. Yeah. I think the proposed going to that's probably what they're yeah, going to and uh you'd say funding. Okay. Public funds funding. Then you'd say public funding. Oh. Oh. Uh, please don't pay attention to that stuff. I'm just talking out loud. What should it be? Uh, but I think we could put under I think we could put another eye under that that speaks to um an analysis of the current use of private therapeutic schools as part of the special education delivery systems. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, that is actually a footprint issue. <laughs> so, oh, again, I think my concern is that we're becoming too prescriptive in this and kind of. Why have this contained? I mean, if we're going to say all these things, why we, you know, someone else could be figuring out the cost. Again, for me, it's like, how do we deliver a high quality education at a sustainable or affordable price? And I would assume this committee would 
you know, look at that. You know, just keep saying this is unaffordable. This way we're doing it is unaffordable. We can't pay for it. That's why it's unsustainable. We need to think of a different way to deliver these services to kids and, and look at what maybe new possibilities there yeah, are. I think, I think we've heard a lot of testimony from folks who have been on commissions like this. And they, you know, they've said that, you know, they, that it is a balancing act between like just a vague charge. Like, don't create, don't, you know, it's just a vague, don't create just a vague charge. And that being too prescriptive. Because I'm just worried we're going to leave something up like that we didn't think of, you know. That's why they have E. That's why they have E. Yeah, that's all yeah. Everything else they want to do. Yeah. yeah. And again, these aren't astronauts yeah. coming in, but they're also not building a school from it's the ground up. Like we're starting, we have a system of state building, you know, we don't get to just start from scratch. That'd yeah. be easier. Yeah, yeah. that's a start point. where we are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So we are. Are there other thoughts or edits at this point on B, physical size and footprint? I have no thoughts. We've added that. some other subsections to get a little more specific on that. So we're adding, we have, I have a couple edits. We're adding a specific subsection about work, the, the workforce and ratios, and we're adding a specific subsection about Therapeutic schools, independent therapeutic schools. And do we mention anywhere about? Uh, well, we we never change this to um, independent schools receiving public dollars. So it will encompass all operating, partially operating, everything in um, our double I. Yeah. Okay. Is this about tuition programs. Okay. Yeah. Working backwards for a letter A. The commission will work backwards. Do I have so just to be to go back to, to Chris's comment? Do we, do we need to put in a specific language that says and in no particular way? <laughs> uh, yeah, I just wonder. <laughs> we might have to. Okay, so this is the governance resources administration section. Thoughts, edits, concerns. In the two right above the A, we could put in developing its recommendations, the commission shall prioritize and consider the following topics. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. It's favorite. <laughs> It's pretty, pretty solid, I gotta say. Yeah. Yeah. Thoughts? There's a one. I will say, okay, in that section, I, uh, little four. The wording is a little clunky, but I'm not sure that matters. Or the staffing needs of the agency, both in terms of quantity and quality. I'm, and I know what you know Beth is getting, but like it's sort of the same kind of work having a well. I, I don't know that it matters, but it's out. a little clunky. Yeah, yeah. Where are we? I got that. Quantity and quality, what are the, what are the quality like quality is still subjective. Yeah, like having what are the staffing needs of the agency of education? Just cut the rest of it out. Yeah, for uh, or for having um, a highly yeah. yeah. I don't I'm concerned a little bit about the word utilization of career technical because it kind of assumes that it's gonna be the same kind of uh, the, the role of career. I was thinking of the role, something that kind of it's not we're just utilizing them. We want to look at yeah, how yeah, can yeah, like the yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. it does. Has a little context to yeah. it. Or it's kind of I think role would be better. Hello. Everybody. <laughs> okay. 
So it, if there are things that we uh, are concerned that may not be in here, is this the time to approach all of In the chart? Yeah. Yep. So we, we don't give them any charge to, um, so, okay, I'm gonna preface this by saying, uh, when we started, Rep Taylor said that there are some things that we could be looking at um, right away. And I have a little note as to some of those things. Um, and one of them is, you know, and, and then also, again, how we may interface. So we've got, we haven't talked at all about healthcare costs. And I recognize that maybe that isn't in this committee, but um, is there any tip of the hat to that discussion within this commission? Excuse me, not committee, but commission. There isn't. I really don't. No. I personally don't think it belongs here. That's our work, probably. I mean, it's okay. And then, so if that's okay, I see. It's an absolutely a cost driver, but I think it's also pretty. In many ways, much of it is out of the like. Might there be changes in bargaining things or in some of that down the line? Sure, I don't know that it is helpful for us to be prescriptive about that here and the greater sort of world of healthcare costs and insurance kind of is so far above school sort of schools. And it's not yes. sustainable. It, I mean, it's clearly well, yes, but that's like so, across, you know, yeah, everybody. So we're looking at sustainable <laughs> right. again. We're looking under the uh, umbrella, so hopefully they'll look at. Yeah. Well, but I think uh, it's out. I think it's outside the scope because just, we're not putting a single healthcare expert on this commission. No, that's, that's, right. and, no, and I'm not saying that it's the time to um, to look in depth at the healthcare, but how healthcare costs and how collective bargaining for wages affects our educational vision and delivery. It is it is a part of this. And so is there, if we're looking at a brand new vision and whether or not it is sustainable, then we have two main drivers of all these testimonies uh, that have been in front of us talking about collective bargaining for, for wages and healthcare. And I think it's important that that it's discussed, whether or not it's in depth, it's the in depth analysis, no. But I kind of just, it's a labor cost. Forget health. It, 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 don't break it down. It's a labor cost issue. And if we're going to look at anything, we could look at that. But I think the way they do would do that is comparison of the neighbors, the other states, and so forth. Say, is our labor cost way out of whack with the rest? I don't think so. That's all but that's but it's that's the contractual. I mean, but, that's, but that's the sort of study you could have to see because a lot of our negotiation now is done by the state healthcare. Oh, yeah. We're talking about state teachers, all being on one. But I think that's it. I look at the labor force type issue versus trying to break it down and what our labor's costing us by an individual item because yeah. and, and we do, I think, actually. Touch on that. I, I, I am I am definitely reluctant to add in the healthcare here, just because this is about creating a vision for education. But I get what you're saying. That vision can't be achieved if we don't have a sustainable way of funding. Of, of, if the costs become unsustainable, uh, but that's probably more in our end as legislators to to deal with than this commission. I think we touch on staffing. Uh, so for example, we talk yeah. about class sizes and, and buildings and, and all of that, because that really does go straight to staff. And what is more our part to me, like, so like the, the I'd, ra I'd rather have a smaller workforce that's highly trained, sustainable than, and that's where I think we're trying to go in the sort of footprint part than saying, we'll keep all the same people we have, but let's just, Cut, you know, put everybody on a statewide contract and cut their salary by 15%. Like, how, again, we don't have the power to do either of those things, first of all. Let's be clear, There's, we're not starting from scratch here. A system exists, collective bargaining exists, labor laws exist. But I think that there's a clear indication here towards workforce that directly gets at labor costs in service of educational quality, not just 
Right. What's the bottom line? Like this is a business. Right. Yeah. Okay. But when we're looking at labor force, we talk about consolidating schools. You might want to consolidate supervisor unions. You might want yeah. to consolidate yeah. principals of schools yeah. that are close enough. Those are the sort of things when I say labor force and you look at costs yeah. and so forth, that's the sort of thing that I think they could look at. And I think you do have some yes. of that in here. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, you know, how many supervisors unions do we have across the state? And how close are they to each other when you talk about schools and how yeah. close they are to each other? I mean, there, there's so much that labor force wise you can really look at that would make a difference. Yeah. We feel like it's an Great. Anything else in your parking lot? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so besides special ed, um, this might be something for just us, but it, oh, uh, well, no, there's two things. Um, our connection in our pipeline to higher education and the, the cost of what we want to, to bear moving into higher education on the ed fund. Um, we haven't really talked about that at all, as and I feel like that's important towards our vision, or do you feel like that's inherently existing in there because it is. It, it lives in here and in like the uses of the Ed Fund. Yeah, sure. Which is early college and do a role. Okay, um, and then the other thing is, we heard a lot about um, unfunded mandates, current reporting requirements. Um, We've got a ton of stuff that that that, that uh, bogs down the central offices, and whether or not we want to address that here, where, where people go into different pieces of legislation and go cut, cut, cut. It, this is duplicative, etc. Um, I, I don't know where that should live, but I'm just bringing it up as something that we heard quite a lot. Yeah, I, I'm only going to give my opinion here. Um, I think that they'll. They'll take that on without us having to tell them to take that on. Okay. I think that's sort of caught in on Because, yeah, they all talk about it. Okay. That's your charge. Right. And also, our charge to remember every time we take up a bill in here, we take up a bill from Senate Ed, we are adding to that. Yep. And we are poised to do that again this session. Um, another thing that's in my parking lot that was mentioned in some testimonies that I wrote down was just. Um, about messaging around this uh, this potential new vision for public education. Um, I, I, I'm just stating this, um, discussing the statewide calendar. This may not be the place for it, but it might be good for have to have them dig in if we're looking at a vision. Does the vision- We don't want to derail them on one topic. Then we'll take them <laughs> I think that falls well, well, with, well with any <laughs> other, and you know, well with any. Yeah, yeah but that, that falls yeah. within within those, I think, yeah. And then the only other thing that I just saw in terms of governance was the was the makeup of the state board if we're going to um, talk about governance. Um, okay. 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 The structure or makeup of the state board of education? Yes, so that would be an added. But they'll discuss it, right? They'll discuss it yeah. if we add it to the chart. I mean, they might discuss it anyway. It's in there. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's just a secretary versus Kamala. Not we're not discussing the functions of the. It's not. I mean, more about the agency. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not. So okay, so jumping back to section that we had closed, we're reopening it. E. Oh. A. Sorry. A. A. What if we moved? First of all, what if we moved a little four up to be right under little one so that agency of education things are sort of in order together? Together. Yeah, that makes sense. And then I would put right after that whether changes need to be made to the structure and composition of the State Board of Education to better serve the education vision. Yeah. yeah. Should we include something about their their role or their charge? I don't know that we could change that. Uh, that seems like a big, yeah, because we're not getting into it. They would recommend that. They're gonna, yeah. Right, we're not asking them to change it. We're just asking them to look at it. Yeah, and, it, and in looking at it, they might recommend some changes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. State, yeah. I mean, I love it. To me, that sort of flow, like agency, state board, then this sort of local control versus not. That makes sense. And then the little CTEs. Yeah. yeah. So that, 
from the mic. Yeah. 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 Um, so in terms of state board composition. That's yeah, that's just that's really important. That's simple though. Or, well, then they're only going to look at the composition. I think we shouldn't limit them to just looking at their composition. Mm -hmm. If the other things come up that they right. Um, role and function. Composition, role, and function. Same thing yes. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cammie Colby's testimony yesterday was really informative to me. You know, They've got three sets clear. of rules they may need to look at how they integrate them, et cetera. Right. So I don't want right. them to so just composition, play. role, and function. No. Yeah. Okay. And so again, some of this, you know, going back, this was work, you know, that Secretary French right. and Tammy Colby were doing as this side trying to do a lot of, and we were getting close to like getting a big recommendation about what does AOE do? What does State Board do? But then COVID. That's right. Yeah. So th there's some existing work on that that just hasn't quite gotten finished. Okay. So we are for now closing the specific charges. Yes. And now going back up to uh, Let's go through the duties and the public engagement part before we get into, and then maybe, uh, we, well, no, let's push ahead to 11. Well, and then start to talk about the who, the perspectives, the buckets. And we never figured out that. where we should mention healthcare and where we should mention special. I thought we weren't mentioning yeah, we're not. We're not we're not gonna mention well. I thought you said you wanted to mention it, but not go into no, it. I Did I lose my yeah. mind? I lost my mind. <laughs> I think it'll be fine. We are talking about the delivery of special ed writ large. I think you know we've got Act 173 that is still in the implementation phase and happening. I think the role of the AOE is discussed here that talks about, but we did add that section about therapeutic, independent therapeutic schools. Um, yes, and my only pushback to you is just the, the the number of people that we have also, a number of kids that require um, other types of specialized services. It's the cost of the special ed that we want to be in, embedded in the vision of moving forward. The fact that so many kids need extra services, so that don't really look at that at all in this vision. I mean, that's to me where we're gonna get to the composition, but like that's where 173 was right. a huge piece of legislation and tons of work and research behind it. It goes specifically to that yeah. and is not totally on track. How does that, you know, that's, Okay. Yeah, that's sort of a model of what's possible and a model of how uh, the ideals on paper versus implementation in the field can be pretty different. Okay. Right. So I don't that's think we want to. Well, well I'm gonna, okay. I'm, so I'm, we're. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep noodling while we yeah. go through time on that issue. Yeah, you were here. All that fun. Okay, so we are. Um, let's do public the public engagement. Part. That's maybe easier if we need to be any more or less prescriptive there. Um, hearings might be too prescriptive. Uh, yeah, I took the word out. Okay. In my thing, it's at meetings. Public meetings. Hearing a public hearing is a very oh, public engagement thing. opportunities. So there's public meetings. I mean, public meetings always have uh, a requirement yeah. for public. <laughs> okay. We we can put in language that says follows um, public meeting law, which then requires public comment. Thank you. So my question is this, um, when I was just doing a lot of work on 687, they did detail out what the process was to warn those meetings. Um, and I just, I just asked because um, so many people are very keen. Hey, welcome to sit up and join if you guys want to. No. <laughs> you definitely don't. Well, perhaps you could. We're going to get away with sitting over there. Uh, sure. <laughs> That's in James' Office of Legislative Counsel. Um, I, you were in the middle of a discussion, so I'm yes. here at your disposal. Right, and I was just thinking that maybe you could shed light on. Uh, if we were to put in language here that said that this commission has to follow public meeting law, mm -hmm. that yeah. comes with warnings of meetings requirements? Correct. Public comment requirement? Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Agenda, all and of where, those things. And where do those things go? Do those things, uh, does the, does the school do they just say it, what? Where they live? Yeah, where they live. It depends on the body. So um, usually if, if AOE is facilitating, and it'll be on AOE's website. 
some cars in the van. You, 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 you may need to be specific about that here because um, this isn't an AOE commission. There is language um, that, um, sorry, it may surprise you to know I'm working on other ends as well. Um, so give me a second to switch, switch gears to the right. Okay. So there is language um, on page six, line 13, assistance. So for the purposes of scheduling meetings and providing administrative assistance, the commission shall have the assistance of AOE. Okay. So I guess my concern is that, uh, and is, feel like we are at a time that people really feel um, left out. And, and I think they feel sometimes that they don't have a voice and that's adding to their stress and their frustration. And if we do just put things up on AOE's website, that doesn't really, we have the same conversation over there. If you just put it on the Natural Resources Board website, then only the regular players that are showing up all the time are gonna know about it even though that law was affecting a lot of individual landowners. And this is affecting regular old property owners. Um, and I just sort of feel like adding- It's affecting everybody. Right, exactly. Um, so I, I do feel that something that is more ro robust and what we, I think uh, where the language ended up was that the towns have the uh, responsibility of putting it out to their, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just putting it out there because I do keep feeling that like sometimes even as legislators, we lose track of when the state board is listening to this and when AOE is doing this. And I think it's important that the school boards let their, like send it, send it to the schools, let the schools um, shoot it out, that this is, a, this is the public meeting. I wonder. Well, I, I think I agree. what we have in there now, it, at least guarantees, requires, that there be a, a warning that we can sort of right. air on you know, I think the, the basic requirement that it be a public I mean, law control things provides a floor. Mm -hmm. Can school boards be required to just you know send it out or be responsible for letting their, their constituents know? Well, I think I mean no, I don't think we can I mean, we could require that of school boards. I don't think that's a fair thing to do to school boards. And then, so the question is, you know, I would, I would certainly assume that, um, you know, we have that, that the associations that are involved in this all contact their people and let them know what's going on all the time. That does not get out to the general public. Uh, I guess that's my big question is, is this an opportunity for channel? I mean, it falls on us in the agency of education. They have a communication department, one of the most well-staffed departments since 2020. They've added how many positions? Look under the picture. So I think it falls on us, the agency of education, and people on here. Like, we have to own it to communicate to our constituents and to the stakeholders. A lot of this is going to come on us. I don't feel comfortable putting that as a requirement. Another requirement on school boards that are already having to grapple with bills, everything. I, I hope maybe we need to add this in the, the work plan part is like a formal work plan and maybe formal work plan and communications plan or something. I mean, I think that there's a, a nexus of what I've seen happen like in Williston. They use town money and ARPA money and work with a consultant to work on a whole new zoning thing. And so everything was on the Williston website, but it's an old clunky website. The consultants also helped stand up like a pretty website with big buttons of like, put your input here, uh, you know, some nice visuals, some, and I think the agency of our state agencies are really hamstrung on their, you know, the, the, the website stuff is just the way they have to put things and file things. You know, you know this if you try to see any reports, like it's got to be there for the, the sort of backstop of law. But I don't know if we can be prescriptive about it in here, but I, I hope that there is a little bit more like 21st century, you know, process some products, some pretty visual website that you go to when you see what's happening, because if it is, it, you know, if it's just the sort of technical 
AOE part, but I'm not sure what our role is in being prescriptive in that or if it's about the resources we provide. I think like NCHEMS that did this with the select committee even did that a bit. Like it, you know, they, they package things, like they, they make things clear. You've got, if you go to the Kerwin Commission stuff for Maryland now, like there's sort of a link to another website where things are more clearly laid out. I don't know, but I don't know that that's our role. As, yeah. as someone who works a lot with communications and yeah. social media and things like you often require someone who is skilled to do that. It's, it's, it's a job in yes. its own. Oh yeah. I know that as someone who gets asked to do things, you know, it's like, okay, it's going to take a lot of time to do this, but whatever. <laughs> what I worry about just throwing that in here is like, do this because it often requires a lot of time and somebody who's really skilled at doing it. So what I think, what I would recommend is looking at the section that Beth noted on page six down in assistance and just including something where it says, for the purposes of scheduling meetings, comma, providing administrative assistance, comma, and ensuring communication to the public or ensuring robust communication, communication the commission the shall have the assistance of the agency of education. Maybe you throw that in there just to make it clear. No, nope. that says no. AI. Oh, you can absolutely do that. Um, but they're just going to put it on their website. <laughs> right. So I would suggest, I was going to suggest okay. what Brady said, and that is make it a charge of the commission's work plan to include a specific communication plan to maximize public engagement. Yes. And make it pretty. Yeah. <laughs> 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 look good. <laughs> uh, all right. Committee, we have testimony scheduled for 11. Uh, I want to give folks a break if they need a break time. Can I guess if you'd like a break? Yes. Yeah. So, I just, yeah. I just want to make sure that that wording is clear. That we are not putting that ask on the committee to do themselves. So if you could just say that wording again, because I don't want it to make to make it feel like in addition all this stuff, you're also in charge of figuring out. Does that make sense? Uh, it it it. What you're saying makes sense in terms of the words being put together. However, I think it does exactly that. Yeah. Who else is going to do it, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, you're asking them, and this is all policy, mm -hmm. right? So please don't take this as me trying to push you in one direction or another. I'm just trying to talk through the logistics. So if you want to add language in here that requires someone to come up with a communications plan in order to maximize public engagement in this process, who is, I think the threshold question is, who is coming up with that plan? Could they lean on the assistance of the AOE to do that though? I mean, outside of the website, but just so they have people who are skilled in that to help fill up that plan. It just seems like a lot to put on folks like yes, I Jeff Francis, whose nine to five job yeah. isn't Developing communication plans. Does that that's where I'm getting at? Like we are develop a uh, communication plan. We are, we are providing them with a significant budget and maybe you know they can make a decision to use that budget for exactly that purpose. Okay. Or we'll leave that up to them. And we might have to increase and, and they're gonna have experts on the this group that we formed. You say you say OE, well of course they, they have a notification plan in their own. The commission will be asking among yourself how to do this. And, it, and they're the ones that's going to know their schedule, know what they're going to want to do where. So why wouldn't they be the ones that set it up? I and mean, there are a lot of associations involved here mm -hmm. who communicate on a regular basis with all of their members. That's right. I, just, I think one of the things I heard clearly, at least from my constituents, but I think it was across the line as people want to be heard. My concern is when people say they want to be heard, they also assume that we're going to do what they yes. say. So there's a big gap. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but I do think, you know, I agree with Catherine that, you know, we really do need to hear from the public, not the people that always show up, you know, that some. Well, this isn't a we, this is a they. They, they need and, to and make we sure. Will also, I mean, remember, we are going to be dealing with this. Yeah, but they should also, you know, again, Come up with a plan, like it says, you know, to inform the public yeah. about when the meeting is. So yeah. it's that's really important, important to the success of this. All right. So we, let's start with that work plan addition piece. Okay. 
Um, five after. Hard started five after. <laughs>